All right, y'all. I know it's been a hot minute, as I'm sure you all know how life is. But after watching the first couple weeks of football this season, there is one player I just have to talk about. I feel like I'm going to go insane if I don't tell the world about him. Well, that was the plan, but then he went ahead and announced himself to the world on Monday Night Football, taking my job away from me. I knew it was a good idea to hold this video off until after week 4. Now, if you're watching a football channel as nerdy as this one, you'd probably already heard of him before said game. But if he keeps up the strong play that he's displayed so far this year all season, then even casual fans will start hearing the name Talanoa Hufanga quite often. In his rookie season last year, he only started three games and was mostly known for his touchdown on a block punt return against the Packers in the divisional round win. But now he's progressed so far so quickly that he's getting Troy Polamalu comparisons. Now, on its face, that seems extremely lazy. A USC safety with long, flowing, luscious locks? Come on. But when Hall of Fame DBs like Richard Sherman, Charles Woodson, and Ronnie Lott make the comparison, you might want to think twice about dismissing it. It goes deeper than the surface. They're both strong safeties who are hard hitters, who can excel in coverage, in run defense, and rushing the passer. They're both as good in the back end as they are up in the box. Most of all, they're both deeply instinctual players, making plays that many players wouldn't even think to be possible. And wouldn't you know it, the 23-year-old actually trained with the Steelers legend and credits him for his excellent anticipation skills. So yeah, the comparison is totally fitting. Of course, I have to point this out for the half-witted nerve herders listening. No, I'm not saying that their careers are comparable and that this means Hufanga will go on to have a Hall of Fame career. We do not know that. All I'm saying is that their play styles are similar. That's all. And anyone who watched Palomalu knows that he was consistently one of the most entertaining players to watch in all of sports. In an era that is increasingly favorable toward offenses, Hufanga is somehow following in that mold today. He makes at least one or two baffling splash plays every game, and you simply cannot take your eyes off of him. Talanoa Hufanga is an absolute menace on the football field, and everybody should know both his name and his game. Now, a little background. Most scouting reports on Hufanga coming out of college had him pegged as a 5th or 6th round player, who topped out as an average backup or special teams player. This despite his insane productivity at USC. In his junior season, he had more than double the amount of tackles of any other Trojan. He had 5.5 TFLs, 3 sacks, 4 interceptions that he returned 90 yards, and also 2 forced fumbles. That's a pretty great season for a safety in itself, but even more so when you take into context that this was all done in only 6 games in the pandemic shortened 2020 season. He earned Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year and First Team AP All-American honors. But his relatively small size and low marks on speed and agility drills pushed him down draft boards. But as I alluded to before, his greatest strengths are things that cannot be measured with standard football testing. Just ask the greatest safety in Niners history. The kid is phenomenal, and what I love is, yeah. you know, the timing and the, the anticipation, yeah. the feel. It, it's What's great is that, you know, here's a guy that looks like he's moving faster than everyone else. Let's dive into some examples already, shall we? Week 1 versus the Bears, his breakout performance. On this play, Chicago utilizes a ton of shifts before the snap to get the Niners off balance. Hufanga, however, is unaffected, moving from one side of the formation to the other. He reads the run play perfectly and thus has zero hesitation in sprinting directly toward David Montgomery at the snap. Tip for the other 31 teams. Attempting to block this man with a wide receiver is a recipe for failure. Usually, you might assume players like Hufanga are reckless with their bodies, but he has this unique ability to avoid and just get around blockers without sacrificing any ground. Here, Javon Kinlaw helps by holding up Bears guard Cody Whitehair so that Hufanga can easily dip by him and make the tackle on Montgomery. He did the same thing a week later in the win over Seattle, except this time with no immediate help from a teammate. Seahawks guard Damian Lewis jumps off his double team in an attempt to slow down Hufanga, who is once again racing to the ball with no hesitation at the snap. With Kinlaw now single teamed, he pushes his blocker back into the back where Hufanga and Eric Armstead wait to make the tackle. This other play for the Seahawks never even had a chance. Hufanga made sure it was over before it even started thanks to his anticipation and timing. A similar play happened on Sunday night against the Broncos. 
You can say he was unblocked, sure, but how many players do you know that can track down a ball carrier from the right side of the formation to the left side of the formation before they even reach the line of scrimmage? Flip the formation and Hufanga makes a similar play in the second quarter. The crazy part about this one is, look at how fast he gets in the backfield. He reaches Melvin Gordon at nearly the same exact time that Russell Wilson does with the ball. This was the most obvious that harkened back to number 43, which even Mr. Bossman Chris Collinsworth brought up on the NBC broadcast. You would think somebody would account for him in one of these games, but they don't. But he really times it out, and it, it does remind you of Polamalu. Totally. You know, I mean, Polamalu used to get to the point where he would time out <laughs> and jump over the pile and make plays on fourth and one. Now, watching all these plays, was there something you noticed about them? Look at Hufanga's tackling technique. Again, I point to the stereotype about instinctual hair on fire players being reckless. But Hufanga displayed excellent form every time. He never led with his head. He made big hits, but he never just blasted into somebody. Each time he wrapped up and made sure that the play was dead. Those sorts of things get taken for granted all the time. The statistics back up Hufanga's tape as well. Through four weeks, he has five tackles for loss or no gain, which is the most among all safeties. Only three other safeties have as many as three such plays. In fact, only eight other players across all positions have more such plays than Hufanga, which is crazy impressive for a safety regardless of where he lines up. Pro Football Focus has a stat they call stops, which just mean plays that constitute a win for the defense, i.e. an offensive gain on first down that is kept to less than 45% of the line to gain less than 60% of the line to gain on second down, and any third or fourth down play kept without a first down or touchdown. Of these plays in run defense, Huvanga is tied for the league lead with nine through four weeks. He relinquished a four stop lead entering the week because the Rams barely ran the ball. Only 14 other defenders have more among all players. And when it comes to total stops, including plays in the passing game, which we will touch on in a minute, Huvanga's 12 is also second best among safeties. His six stops against the Bears in Week 1 is unsurprisingly tied for the highest total for any DB in a single game this year. But you know, this was kind of to be expected of Hufanga. Maybe not to this extreme, but he was always seen as a great run defender in the box. Where his improvement has really shined so far in 2022 has been in the passing game. Against the Seahawks, the 49ers blitzed on a 2nd and 12, and with the other safety to Sean Gibson on the other side of the field, Hufunga was basically isolated on Tyler Lockett, one of the fastest receivers in the NFL, in the slot. Hufunga remained patient while Lockett ran upfield, and then hung tight like glue with him as he made his cut to the middle of the field, running the route with him. Geno Smith still tried to fit the ball in ahead of Lockett, but Hufanga perfectly undercut him and batted the ball into the air and right into the waiting arms of Gibson, who had finally made his way over for the interception. On another forced incompletion versus the Seahawks, Hufanga is lined up on the hash at the snap. His decisiveness is once again on display here. As soon as Lockett makes his cut inside and Smith winds up to throw, Hufanga is moving 100 miles per hour to punch the ball out at the opportune moment. Perfect timing again, as is becoming the norm for him. He also had his first career interception in week one, starting the play up at the line of scrimmage before dropping back deep as Justin Fields was about to take the snap. Fields looked off Fred Warner and attempted to fit it into Darnell Mooney, but Hufanga read his eyes the entire way from the opposite hash and broke on the ball as soon as Fields looked right. Fields never even saw him. Then of course, the big one that I referenced in the intro, the 52-yard pick six of Matthew Stafford to seal the week four Monday night football win over the defending champs. On this one, Hufanga lined up over Tyler Higby in the slot, bunched up with Cooper Cup on the outside. As soon as he saw Higby release outside in front of Cup, Hufanga instantly recognized the screen to Cup that was coming and jumped at it, leading to an easy score. Once again, this is next level anticipation. Per PFF's charting, Hufanga has been on the field for 144 coverage snaps through four weeks and has been targeted 13 times. He's only given up five receptions for 41 yards, which is the third fewest among safeties targeted at least 10 times. His 38.5% completion percentage allowed is the best among such players. He's given up zero touchdowns in just a 7.7 .7 passer rating, which tops all qualifying safeties, and is second among safeties targeted even just five times next to his teammate. He has two forced incompletions to go along with the two interceptions, and only Jordan Poyer has more combined such plays at the position. 
Hufanga even makes big plays in the passing game while not in his coverage. On this play, he's covering the curl flat and the Bears run a screen to Khalil Herbert. When Herbert gets the ball, Hufanga is approximately 10 yards away from the play, and he's still able to get to Herbert to make yet another tackle for loss. Screw his combine numbers. That speed and acceleration is ludicrous. Hufanga's PFF coverage grade of 83.0 through week 4 sits third among safeties, and he is one of just six players at the position to have a grade of 70 plus in both coverage and run defense. His overall PFF grade of 84.6 is second best among safeties, behind only Cameron Curl who has seen limited action. If the season ended now, Hufanga would be a shoe in first team all pro. A question mark entering the season, Hufanga and Gibson have made the back end formidable so far this year. Now just wait until Jimmy Ward returns from IR in a couple weeks. It was fair to point out that the Niners had faced weak passing games this season against the Bears, Seahawks, and Broncos, but their budding star held up just as well against tougher competition in the Rams. So for now, it looks like he will be a problem for offenses for years to come. Just ask teammate Fred Warner. I think Hufanga's been been pretty amazing uh, through three games. You know, some of the stuff that he's been doing just coming off the edge. And some people might think, oh, he's just lifting off the edge and making it. No, like this, it's uh, it's happening every game. He's, I mean, you would think that people would know how to stop him by now, but you you can't stop when a guy's just relentless, you know, and and, and playing fast and physical. Um, and it's hard, hard to stop a guy like that. No matter what happens or who he's playing against, that is one thing that will never change. Hufanga's relentless relentlessness. If you're ever wondering who that guy was for the 49ers that just flew into the backfield to make a play from 20 yards out, you should now just know. The dude is a menace. Fun fact, I had plans to make a video with that title and even whipped up the thumbnail for it when my pal JP Acosta had to go and unknowingly one-up me on Twitter by calling Hufanga the menaciest menace of all menaces on a team full of menaces. It doesn't even feel like a real word at this point. But JP also wrote a great piece on Hufanga on his column Establish the Fun for SB Nation, which you should all read as he goes more into the nitty gritty terminology that I just honestly can't fake for y'all. JP is a quickly rising star like Hufanga so go follow him while there's still time to hop on the bandwagon because he knows ball. And hop on the Hufanga bandwagon before he becomes a pro bowler and all pro. You can thank me later. An instinctual player with sound fundamentals and technique who can cover, tackle, defend the run, and rush the passer? What more could you want? A guy who makes splash plays more than almost any other defender? Say no more. An extremely down-to-earth and humble guy despite his successes? Done. Honestly, I actually didn't think I played that well. And anytime we score, you know, I want to put it on me. Whether or not it's my job or not, I would, I would love to just put the touchdowns on me because, like I said, I'm the last line of defense as a safety. And for us as a defense, we want to hold each opponent to zero points. From individual standpoint, you know, I'm not satisfied with, with a game like that when, when we don't win. Talanoa Hufanga is a great person, an absolute menace on the football field, and most of all, a budding superstar just waiting to be recognized as one. Welcome to the show.